afternoon. Welcome to the briefing. I have one item at the top. On OSCE access, Russia supported separatists in eastern Ukraine continue to prevent OSCE monitors from doing their jobs by blocking access to large areas of territory under their control. Most recently, yesterday, monitors were blocked from entering uh, parts of an area just east of Mariupol, and we applaud the efforts of the OSCE uh, to broker a local ceasefire there. The Russian-backed separatists signed the Minsk agreements and implementation plan, allowing OSCE monitors access to verify the ceasefire and withdrawal of heavy weapons. Uh, this is not happening. Denying access to the OSCE gives the appearance the separatists have something to hide. We again call for free and unfettered access throughout Ukraine and for the OSCE up to and including the Ukraine-Russia border and urge all sides to work with the OSCE to prevent further violence. Matt. Thank you. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Uh, I want to start with Armenia because last night the president, as we had expected, put out his long-awaited statement on Correct. the centennial of the events of 1915. And once again, he did not uh, fulfill his campaign promise to call what happened a genocide. And this was met with, probably not surprise, but with some anger from people in the Armenian community, one of which said that it was a sad spectacle, that he's playing word games, and that he has regretfully, he, he, he has regretfully proven to the world today that he is not that president, meaning that president who said America deserves a leader who speaks truthfully about the Armenian genocide and responds forcefully to all genocides, which was a quote from Senator candidate Obama. Do you agree with that? Matt, we've been over this multiple times this week. The president put out a very powerful statement speaking to the historical events that happened. It was a very lengthy statement. I know you've all read it. Uh, we understand that some uh, people may want to hear different language used. We believe this is the right course, but all you have to do is read the president's statement, see how seriously uh, he feels about these historical issues. One of the things the president said in his statement was that I have consistently stated my own view of what occurred in 1915, and my view has not changed. What is that view? Could I'm happy you for you to ask the White House that question, Matt. Do you Matt. think I would get an answer at the White House I don't if know. I asked that question? I'm happy for you to go ask the White House, Matt. Do you Matt. know if the State Department was uh, – did, did is the State Department okay with this, or did you encourage this kind of a state – did you encourage him not to fulfill his campaign pledge, which I must also say that, you're, that the U.N. ambassador – the U.S. ambassador to the United Nations, when she was working for the campaign in 2008 – urged Armenian Americans specifically to vote for then Senator Obama specifically because he would keep his no, word on this. You've asked the same question every day this week. And I give Yeah, you you're the right. Same and answer. I think that well, yeah, can you tell that the answer is not very satisfactory? Well, I, I don't I'm going to keep giving why. you the same one. Does 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 the you're state department agree with You're certainly happy to, this? you know, have your own opinion about I, whether you like my answer or not. I mean, the president put out a very lengthy statement, Matt, that spoke oh, very Compared to what he usually does, it's five paragraphs. Most presidential statements are not this long, okay? Speaking very uh, forcefully to uh, this issue and how he sees these historical events. And and not, and the word, uh, genocide. Do you think it's in U.S. national interest to deny Again, the truth about the Armenian guys, I'm genocide? I'm not sure why we're going to do To deny the fact that it happened, that it was a genocide. I think if you read the president's statement, he was very clear about what happened. I've said this I every single day this week. You can also read my briefing transcripts. I'm not going to have much more for you today than we've already talked about on this. We feel like uh, the course we are taking is the correct one, but he was very forceful in his statement in uh, acknowledging the historical facts here. Uh, and speaking about them, I think, in a very powerful so way. So it is right for him not to use the word genocide. We said we believe this policy is the right one to pursue. Are you afraid of Turkey? I'm not even sure how to answer that question. What, what can Turkey do to a country as big and powerful as the United States? As I said, we believe this is the right course to take, and I'm not going to have much for you, more for you on this issue than that. I have two questions mm -hmm. in between. Um, the first is the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom released a statement yesterday mm -hmm. describing 1915 atrocities as genocide by quoting Pope Francis. 
Should we reconsider this statement as U.S. official view on the issue? No, the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom is an independent bipartisan U.S. advisory commission created by an act of Congress. It is not part of the executive branch. So this is, uh, their press announcement does not constitute a change in U.S. government policy. The second question is, uh, for the first time in modern Turkish history, a remembrance service for Armenians who lost their lives in 1915 is held today with the attendance of a senior Turkish minister. Also, President Erdogan issued a statement for the ceremony saying he genuinely shares the pain of Armenians. What is your take on that? Well, I hadn't seen those specific uh, incidents that you, that you mentioned there. I, I would again note, as I've talked about every day this week, uh, that the secretary met with the Turkish foreign minister. Uh, they talked about U.S. support for Turkey-Armenian normalization and the importance of Turkey taking concrete steps to match its government statements on reconciliation with Armenia. I just don't have much more for you than that. Okay. Statement. So he says, um, amid horrific violence that saw suffering on all sides, one and a half million Armenians perished. Now, uh, on Holocaust Remembrance Day, would you write about suffering on all sides? I would don't you think we're going to compare uh, including any two the events. Nazi we're not going to compare any. Wouldn't you compare any... what the Ottoman Turks did to the Armenians to what Nazi Germans we're did to the Jews? We're just not going to compare any two historical events. Uh, let me ask you a quick question. Does the United States have a, a definition or a standard as to what constitutes a genocide? Uh, I mean, does it have a figure or... I mean, a formula, how, how do you I'm happy, decide? I'm happy to check, Saeed. Can I, can I yes. Prime, uh, President Erdogan's comments. Not, uh, he also said that it was baseless and groundless accusations that, 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 that a genocide took place. Um, I asked you about those comments yesterday. What's, what's, what's the administration? Do you, do you believe that it's I baseless and groundless? I answered this question yesterday. Is there a new question? Yeah, I'm looking for an answer today. I don't think I got one yesterday. I'm not going to have much more to share than I did yesterday. We Ye made yesterday clear you what said you weren't, you hadn't seen the comments. So and I'm I, just not going to do analysis of what President <coughs> Erdogan has said. The President Obama spoke about this issue in a lengthy statement. Uh, we've talked about it a lot this week. We believe this is the right course, and I'm just not going to have much more light to shed on any of it. Do this. you understand why people are making, why, why people are asking these questions? We understand that some people would like to hear different language. I understand that, certainly. Okay, quite apart from the language, do you understand why people are asking about it? Because it is the, it, it is, the president campaigned. He asked for people's votes on this specific issue, and he's and not following through. And I have repeatedly through. said, I, you are free to ask the White House these questions, Matt. Right, well, That's where the president works, the last time I checked. last question at the White House briefing today. Well, then you and should talk to your colleagues about what they ask I, about. I, I guess I should. I think you do <laughs> by, um, by not using that, that word, do you think the U.S. is being an accomplice to such a denial? I think if you read the President's statement, it is very clear how strongly he feels about what happened here, about the historical events. And again, I just don't have much more for you than that. Let's move on. Go Hello, ahead. Hi. Um, <laughs> moving to a different subject. Mm -hmm. um, we were looking for an update on a case of another American hostage, a woman kidnapped along with her Canadian husband mm -hmm. near the AFPAC border in 2012. Uh, the question is, what is the U.S. government doing? What can you say the U.S. government is doing to rescue them, to assist their family? Uh, mm -hmm. It's been reported that the couple's been held so long now that they've actually had a baby in while in captivity. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, as I've said generally, whenever an American citizen is being held hostage overseas, we do everything we can, whether it's using intelligence tools, uh, diplomatic tools, law enforcement tools to find them and bring them home. Uh, for privacy reasons and for their safety and security, I'm just not going to get into more details than that. We also, of course, provide any assistance uh, to the family uh, that we can as well. Can I ask, um, do you have, still have recent proof of life? Do you I'm think just not going to get into specifics on those things, Tristan. Uh -huh. I, I had asked yesterday about this uh, India government's uh, ordering all these funds coming from going from Ford Foundation and then earlier this thing mm -hmm. on Greenpeace. Do you have anything on that? Well, we are aware that the Ministry of Home Affairs suspended the registration of Greenpeace India and has placed the Ford Foundation on a prior permission watch list. Uh, we remain concerned about the difficulties caused to civil society organizations by the manner in which the Foreign Contributions Regulations Act has been applied. We are concerned that this recent ruling limits a necessary and critical debate within Indian society, and we are seeking a clarification on this issue with the appropriate Indian authorities. 
Speaking of foreign funding, can I go back to something we talked about a little bit yesterday? Sure. Um, I've been told, and I would just want to make sure that it's correct, that the um, contributions to the Clinton Foundation that were reported about uh, the Uranium One related ones that were reported about yesterday in the New York Times were not a violation of the memorandum of understanding or whatever it was that um, between the Secretary and the State Department and, and the White House. Is that, is that correct? Well, I don't know exactly what you mean by the term violation, well, given this was a political not, agreement entered into. Right, right, it wasn't a regulatory did, responsibility. Fair enough. Sorry, violation may be the wrong word. Mm -hmm. Did not contravene. Uh, they weren't covered. Correct. Maybe that's the better. They, that is correct. These specific donations that the New York Times reported about yesterday were not covered, are not required to be disclosed by the memorandum. That's is certainly that my understanding, Matt. Can you explain why that is? I'm happy to check on some more information on that. I'm happy to check. You don't know why that, that it I'm is happy they... to check. If I knew why, I would tell you. I'm happy to check. All right. My understanding is that <laughs> the reason why it wasn't, uh, it, it didn't, it, it didn't, um, they were not required to be disclosed is because they were made by charitable organ that be, because that agreement applied only to foreign uh, donations from foreign governments and units of foreign governments, i.e. like government owned companies and did not apply to individuals or to uh, chair uh, independent cha charities that are run independent of governments. Do you know if that's correct? I'm happy to I'm happy to check on the specifics on that. Um, okay. You are able to say though that you do, that it was it did not that they weren't required to be disclosed under this That's agreement. That's my understanding, but I'm happy okay. to check on some more details here, Matt. Uh, even if it didn't, even if these uh, donations did not. Uh, were not required to be disclosed. And they may have, again, I, that's my understanding. Let me check with our folks here. I want to be very clear about what's covered by the MOU and what's not, okay? All right. Marie, on Iran, uh, the Iranian Foreign Minister's spokesperson has said that uh, Secretary Kerry uh, talked to uh, Minister Zarif over the phone uh, and they discussed Iran and Yemen. Who said that? I'm sorry? Uh, for, uh, Iranian Foreign Minister's spokesperson. Ah, my counterpart. Yeah. Uh, as I've said, uh, the Secretary uh, and Undersecretary Sherman and our team have a variety of ways of communicating with the Iranians, and we're just not going to outline specifically always what those are. What is the status of the talks now? You They're going on right now at Wendy right. Sherman's level in Vienna right. with our experts on the ground. Okay. And what is expected? What is next? I mean, what? Well, we have two and a half months to get the annexes done. Okay. So, so they're working on Are there on any plans for? The secretary to meet with Mrs. Zarif he, anytime soon? He may. They're both going to be in New York on Monday, and we expect they probably will. Okay, so it is more than likely that they will meet. That's true. Okay, yeah. and uh, they, will they focus on uh, the uh, uh, nuclear talk, Correct. or will they discuss no, other things nuclear, like Yemen? The nuclear issue. Okay. Were you able to find out if the, um, the Americans being detained had been raised yet in Vienna? Uh, I, I'm sorry, I didn't ask that question of them. On um, on the question that Matt was asking yesterday about the Weinstein family statement, mm -hmm. um, where they said some of the uh, you know some of the interactions they had with the U.S. government were disappointing and inconsistent, um, have a do you believe that that was a specific reference to the State Department? And b have you reached out to the Weinstein family since this statement was released to sort of resolve any of these issues or? Uh, talk to them about it uh, well, in any way. We wouldn't reach out based on a statement. We've reached out to them and been in contact with them since uh, Dr. Weinstein was taken captive. So we have provided ongoing consular assistance to the family as we do in any case where an American is taken hostage overseas. Uh, I'd refer you to them to explain further what their statement was referencing. We've provided any assistance we can. I don't have any contact to read out for you today. Um, but if we do uh, going forward, I'm happy to. Regarding Zarif uh, Kerry call, uh, why do you think the Iranians wanted to talk about this uh, phone call? I don't have call much more analysis you for you of this, and I didn't actually confirm there was a phone call. So I think we're moving on, yes. Did you know if the Turkish foreign minister told the secretary if his government may take certain steps to defuse the tension with Armenia? It was an issue they discussed, and the secretary made clear uh, that this was an important issue to him. I am not going to have much more detail than that for you. So nothing new. 
I'm just not going to have much more detail. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, about efforts to, to get U.S. citizens out of Yemen. Yesterday mm -hmm. you said we have let Americans know that have signed up with the State Department uh, how, how they can avail themselves to, uh, of these opportunities. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, so we spoke with, with at least one American uh, who said he wasn't uh, contacted by any American official. <clears throat> or did he any sign up US on our or, online yes, system? Yes, he did. Okay, yeah, well, I do, I'm said. not sure I believe that because. So, so I'm just. Uh, right, so our system online is a very good one where if people sign up through the STEP program, we will stay in touch with them over email, over text message often, and it's all posted on our website as well. He can go there and look at the website as well. So you, you can confirm that, that uh, uh, you reached out to everyone who signed up. If that. they sign up for certain things online, including updates for Yemen, they will get that information. Yes, they will. Thank you. You, Nick, can make, you can probably uh, maybe take this question if you don't uh, are not aware of it. I was not aware of it until just before coming in here. But there were some amendments that were passed: the trade bill Wednesday and Thursday, and the Senate Finance Committee I and the House I Ways and Means Committee. Saw some of. That. I don't have any about, response. Sorry, I saw about some Israel. of that. Okay, could you take? Yep. Uh, this is about Israel and B and BDS and all this. Uh, stuff. yeah, I hadn't seen that. I'll just um, take it. Well, the the question is basically just what, what does the administration support the, the okay. language these amendments? Thank can you. Can we go back to Yemen? We can. For a second. Okay. Uh, first of all, can you confirm the Russians are saying that they evacuated 46 Americans? Uh, yesterday, I confirmed that some Americans had left on a Russian uh, yeah, uh, flight and they're in figure. Moscow. Um, I'm not sure I can actually confirm that figure. Let me see. Let me see if I have that in here. Um, what else, Saeed? Uh, and also, can you tell us what's going on? I don't have numbers. Okay. No. Uh, the, uh, also, the Secretary General announced the appointment of uh, Ismail uh, Wild Sheikh. Yes. As uh, the new uh, envoy. Mm -hmm. Now, his background is in uh, strictly in humanitarian uh, issues, on humanitarian issues. Does that mean that we are headed towards a humanitarian mission rather than a political mission? Well, we look forward to the new appointment and the rapid, unconditional resumption of all party negotiations. We are very focused on political dialogue uh, and getting the parties back to the table. Okay, but, but you see this as perhaps. The UN will focus its efforts. No, not at on all. The, the UN is focused the on the political dialogue piece of this okay. and getting the parties back to the table. Okay, so you expect that he will get the cooperation that his predecessor that's, did not. That's we, we certainly need to get back to the table. Here. Like the Saudi Saudi Arabia and the GCC. I said we need to get back to the table. I've been clear what needs to happen. Uh, thank you, Madam. A couple of questions from South Asia, mm -hmm. starting with India. Um, U.S. Ambassador uh, Mr. Rick or Rahul Verma was recently in Washington. Mm -hmm. And he was a guest speaker at the Carnegie Institute. Was it? Uh, and he laid out the U.S.-India relations. And uh, in a short term, he has been traveling and what he has accomplished between the two countries, trade and other economic issues. Mm -hmm. My question is: Was he carrying any back and forth message from the secretary? Uh, I'm happy to check with the ambassador uh, to see if he was. Uh, he speaks to the secretary frequently. They talk about a number of issues, but. I don't have anything else to sort of share with you today. So overall, how you rate him now? As I mean, I think Ambassador Verma is a great ambassador. And I know him personally. He's a great representative for the U.S. and India. I don't have much more analysis to do for you than that. Second, as far as uh, Prime Minister Modi is concerned, he has been traveling uh, after the U.S. Uh, great visit to a number of countries, Germany, France, mm -hmm. and Canada next door. And for, of course, the... Uh, make in India and other issues, uh, nuclear issues, civil nuclear and all that. Is this, uh, if U.S. knew about his visits and uh, whether it's going to help uh, the U.S. because he's getting the same businesses or talking about the same thing what he had been uh, talking here in the U.S. and all the well, agreements with the U.S.? I think these are separate bilateral conversations he's having. We certainly thought we had a very good visit here, but I don't have much more for you on his other visits. And finally, one more on Pakistan, please. Uh, recently, you have uh, seen in the news that uh, China and Pakistan, a lot of agreement over close to 45 or $50 billion and all that, mm -hmm. 10, 12,000 Chinese will be coming to Pakistan, uh, helping uh, in many ways. Uh, is that because uh, US did not help Pakistan in many ways or? No, I think uh, this is a separate bilateral issue that they, issues they work together on. I wouldn't draw much more from it than that. There's a, Iran legislation on the Hill. Yeah. I don't know if you'll have anything on these, uh, the, um, but I want, specifically wanted to ask about the amendments that are being offered by various and sundry senators. Mm -hmm. Do you have any comment on, I don't. on them? I don't. Um, 
is it safe to assume that because the administration has decided that it would, the president could support the Corker uh, car, um, bill that existed when it was first when it was first voted on out of the committee that you would not like to see any amendments to it, or are you willing to work with them? On I think the former more than the latter. So, in other words, you would like to see the language in the bill stay as that's intact what we've spoken to. I don't have much more for you than that today. Okay. Well, once the can you can we um, implore you for next week? I mean, once these amendments become yep. clearer to get some we kind of response. We will keep talking on. about it. He asked some questions from India. When uh, President Obama visited India and Modi, Mr. Modi, Prime Minister, visited the United States of mm -hmm. America, they there was a talk about on arrival visa India and United States. Do you have any update on the visa on arrival issue? I don't have any in update India? for you. Okay. One more thing for Bangladesh for mm -hmm. city election in Bangladesh for free and fair. Do you think any observer is going to go from your side? Uh, I don't know. Let me check. Thank uh, you. Let's just do a couple more to Friday afternoon. Just one more quickly. Yeah. Um, as far as this Yemen and Saudi Arabia and all these attacks and all that, according to the reports, that U.S. pressure, that's why the Saudis are stopping or stopped the um, bombings. My question here comes that Saudi Arabia was uh, seeking and uh, it was promised by Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif's visit that uh, Pakistan will help and send the uh, troops uh, to help the Saudi Arabia mm -hmm. because Saudi Arabia has some kind of internal problem also as far as security issues are concerned. But this time, Pakistan did not help or did not send any troops. And pa Saudi Arabia is one of the closest and also uh, one of the more I mean, financi financiers of Pakistan. Mm -hmm. What do you think now that uh, between the two countries, if U.S. Uh, has any role in this issue, uh, Pakistan? It's really a decision for Pakistan to make. Thank you, ma'am. Matt. I've got uh, two unrelated, very brief, and I'm not sure you'll have an answer to the first one, which is, do you have I'm any excited. reaction to the release or the judge, a judge's, Canadian judge's order to release Omar Khadir, former Gitmo? I don't have a response. Um, I'll check Can you. you see if we I, can I will. get one? And then the second one is, I don't, did you see, the, there was an editorial today in the Washington Post which talked about some musings of the Argentine president. President Kirchner mm -hmm. about a global Jewish conspiracy essentially to run the world. Um, the I'm wondering if the administration has any thoughts about either I, the editorial I, itself. I'm sorry, or I did if, not read the editorial. Or President Kirchner's. I comments. also haven't seen those comments. I'm happy to check with our team, and anything like that would obviously be of great concern. But let me check. Okay. Let's Thank just you. do two more. Yeah, did we ask about Iran ships already? The, uh, we, the convoy? The royal we did not. No, okay. None of you did. Uh, mm -hmm. All right. And I would like to Go ask about Justin. Iran ships. <laughs> yeah. uh, so yesterday the report was that they turned around. Do you have any indication that, they've, uh, that they're actually heading back to Iran? Um, or? We're monitoring the situation. Uh, we obviously welcome all responsible steps to de-escalate the situation. Uh, and we're continuing to watch. Okay. Nothing and there's else to confirm. nothing, no communications, no uh, official word from Iran that they're heading back or that they've decided nothing. not to send guns to Houston. Nothing else to confirm for you. Okay. 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 Last one in the back. Last one of the week. Thank Make it you. a good one. Uh, the no pressure. Issued its, uh, its statement on the Armenian Remembrance Days uh, and without qualifying genocide, genocide apparently. So my question is. The United States government has record of recognizing the Armenian genocide officially. It happened in 1981. President Reagan, not candidate, but President Reagan, in 1981, April 22nd, called the events of 1959 genocide. I'm wondering if this building, and maybe you particularly, this topic has been discussed so much recently. Where Including the, where the first the 15 minutes of the briefing already today. So this historic, yes, uh, fact of recognition by Reagan, uh, is something kept in the records of this building? On, uh, are you, were you aware of this? Uh, I'm not aware of every statement every candidate for president or president has made on this. I think the president we have now, President Obama, put out a very lengthy uh, statement, a very powerful statement, speaking to the historical events of 100 years ago. And I would point you there for anything further on this. Thank you. Thank you.